What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Gabriel, just on the Fan TV. Back at you another video. And in this video, we're going to talk about the second round of OTAs and that the writers were actually present for uh, yesterday. Before we get into that, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Everybody who has been doing that, I appreciate you. I picked up a couple new subscribers in the, in the past week, so thank you guys. And I love making the content, so we're going to keep it coming. All right, remember, smash that like button. So let's get into the practice reports. So this is the second round of Ravens OTAs. This is from practice yesterday, uh, June 1st. And um, so some, some encouraging news came out. So these observations from Ryan Mink, Jeff Sarebeck, Jonah Schaefer, Kyle P. Barber. You can follow all those guys on Twitter. And they all have good practice updates. And they're, they're really insightful about what they're saying and keeping us fans informed about what's going on. So I thought what they saying, let, let, let me bring to you guys, right? All right. So first and foremost, Lamar Jackson not present. Um, to know shouldn't be to anybody surprised that he's not there. Uh, it's it's pretty obvious that he's not going to be here for the voluntary stuff. Okay, now we can make up that uh, what we will. It is what it is. I'm not gonna make a big deal out of it. Yes, this is the first year he's missed voluntary OTAs, and it happens to be a contract year. Now all of that together, you can make a story out of, but I'm not going to. <clears throat> he has to be here in Owens Mills, uh, June. 14th. That is the first day of mandatory minicamp. All right. So June 14th to the 16th. If he's not here, then we'll have something else to talk about. All right. So for the guys who was who were there, uh, Chuck Clark. Chuck Clark is present and being a ultimate professional. He was there last week as well. But the reason I'm bringing him up in this video is Marcus Williams mentioned Chuck Clark um, in his post practice presser and saying that Chuck Clark is actually helping him become more comfortable with the defense and everything like that. So it's actually interesting to see that Chuck Clark, a guy whose name has been in trade rumors, might be released, whatever, is still actively helping the Ravens. He's just being Chuck Clark, the ultimate professional. So if it ends up going trade release, you know, Chuck Clark has been a, a great, great player for the Ravens as far as uh, his leadership. On the field, it's, it's been up and down, and we know that. But his commitment to the team should never be questioned. So that was good to hear. And um, so follow, also follow the NFL chick on Twitter. She's really plugged in with the Ravens. She said that Chuck Clark changed um, agents, changed representation uh, over the past week, which could lead to him being um, traded and or released. We'll see. All right. Um, what else? So the wide receivers had a good day today. Um, some explosive plays. Didn't really hear about any drops like we were hearing from Ricky Mini Camp in the first round of OTA. So that's good. That's progress. Uh, Rashad Bateman had an explosive play today, 40, or yesterday. A 45 yard touchdown from uh, Tyler Huntley. And they, they were saying that Tyler Huntley himself was looking a lot better this round of OTAs than he did um, last week. So they said he still had some iron passes here and there. But at, at the end of the day, he, he was a better overall quarterback this week, which is good because. He's an important player for the team. He is the Ravens' backup, but um, he has to show that he can continue to get better because you don't want to see him stagnant, right? Um, Lamar Jackson is going to be the quarterback of this team for the future, so I'm not saying anything like that. But Tyler Huntley, if he wants to eventually become a starter in this league for uh, another team in the NFL, he has to put out these kind of practices because if we hear it, other teams hear it. You know what I mean? So um, if he's showing and proving that he's getting better and better, Maybe one day that'll lead to him being a starting quarterback for another team. All right. All right. So who else? Tyler Bat Tyler Beatty. Uh, I'm not sure if it's Batty or Beatty, but I'm gonna go go with go with Beatty. <laughs> Tyler Beatty is showing his worth as a pass catching running back. He was pretty much involved in all the snaps um over OTAs and and specifically in the uh pass catching drills. And he was doing a really good job apparently. Um seven on seven, eleven on eleven, catching passes, making plays, which is interesting because the Ravens, <laughs> to much of France chagrin, don't throw to the running backs a lot. Now, last year, a lot of hype around training camp was that J.K. Dobbins was going to be a guy who was going to have a Christian McCaffrey-like impact and catch a lot of passes. So, early in, tra early in OTAs, we're seeing that if Tyler Beatty can do this, then when, when J.K. Dobbins gets healthy and ready, he can do it as well. Speaking of J.K. Dobbins, he was there. He was in the building, along with Marcus Peters. It actually ended up coming out to the sidelines. You're just watching practice, uh, t-shirt shorts, you know, just watching the guys. 
And um, it seemed to be good. They were smiling, so it was good to see them guys back out there, um, even if it is just to watch practice. So they're around the team. All right. Defensive side of the ball, uh, real quick. Dalen Hayes apparently was all over the field. Uh, he was breaking up passes at the line of scrimmage. He was, um, if, if you were allowed to you know, actually get a sack, he had multiple plays where it probably would have resulted in a sack. But like I said, it's OTAs, it's no contact. But um, if he was allowed to do that, he would have had multiple plays where he actually ended up getting a sack. So this guy, Dalen Hayes, is actually a guy that I was really glad to hear this news because he's my pick for the Ravens and breakout player on the defensive side of the ball. Because to break out, you need talent and you need opportunity. So he has the talent. Um, obviously, I, I think he was he's a third-round pick last year. Didn't play most of the season on IR. But you could always see that he was working and getting better and that the talent was there. Um, I'm talking about preseason. They didn't hear what we saw at you know, training camp and things like that. Uh, second of all, opportunity. Now, the Ravens have not officially signed Justin Houston yet. He's on that free agent tender. So, I mean, he'll, I, I assume he'll be a Raven eventually, but we'll see. So, when he gets here, obviously, that's one spot taken up. But he's not an every-down player at this point in his career. So, you got a Daffy Owe on one side, and you got a blank slate on the other side. Because Tyus Bowser is hurt uh, still. Uh, David Ojabo is hurt. So, Dalen Hayes is going to have a major opportunity to step into a role and impact this team say the least, in a significant role. We're talking about at least first four to five weeks of the season, I would assume, um, if not longer. So um, I did a breakout video about, you know, guys like Daley Hayes and things like that. So if he can get somewhere in the neighborhood of, I think I said four to seven sacks, it'd be a really good season for him. Um, we'll see how much he can do in this in this role and see how much his role is expanded. But it's good to hear that he's making plays. All right, who else? Um, Jalen Armour Davis, he caught a pick today in practice. Uh, so he's he's continuously making plays, and um, this is the first time I'm hearing of an interception from him. But you've been hearing about sticky coverage from Jalen Armour Davis um, in practice. So the Ravens might have another good cover corner. Can't have too many corners, that's especially for the Ravens. That's their motto. You can see over the last I don't know five years, the Ravens have really invested in the quarterback position. You know, even longer than that, really. Uh, mentioned Tyler Huntley already. Wide receivers, no no drops today. Oh, Nick Boyle is back. So Nick Boyle is back, and according to Greg Roman and according to Mark Andrews, who said the last week, Nick Boyle is back and looking better than ever. Now, usually when we get like these, I'm in the best shape of my life reports. I've never felt better in my career. Take it with a grain of salt, all right? These guys, they always going to say something like that because, you know, they have to show and prove that they're, they're in good shape. They're in good condition to play. So until fans see it, um, let's just hold off on Nick Balls in the best shape of his life stuff. All right. But hopefully he is better because he is going to be a part of this team. I, I, you know, I think there was some concerns about whether or not he would get cut. Well, maybe not concerns, but maybe like, you know, uh, the Ravens drafted two tight ends. Uh, it, it, so <laughs> how many tight ends are the Ravens realistically going to carry? Uh, Nick Ball will be, uh, a fourth tight end. Andrews Cole are likely Nick Ball. That's four tight ends. I mean, a lot of teams only carry three. But the Ravens aren't like built like a lot of teams. So, um, but Nick Ball, if he's going to be here, he needs to do more than just block, because I get he's in the you know best shape of his life. He looks better than ever before. That's all great, but having a tight end who only blocks when you already have three tight ends on the roster is just not um, to me an effective use of a roster spot. So if he gets more involved in the pass game, then maybe. You know, it, it, it'll work out better. Okay. Um, Shamar Bridges and Slade Bolden. Two guys who have been constantly mentioned um, as undrafted free agents who are still making plays. Shamar Bridges caught a touchdown pass yesterday in uh, one of those uh, short field session drills. And Slade Bolden has been all over the field making an impact. And there's also been, you know, some talk about maybe Slade Bowen doing kick returns. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Devin DuVernay may be more focused on receiver this year and not as much special team stuff. So if that's the case, then the Ravens do obviously have an opening and kick returner. So maybe he fills that role. But as far as the wide receiver stuff, Shamar Bridges and Slade Bolden, two guys who are seemingly separating themselves in the undrafted free agent uh, contest, war, battle, however you want to describe it. So keep looking out for those guys. Um, so Greg Roman had a presser. 
And it's funny because we haven't seen a lot of Greg Roman this offseason. Um, <laughs> when they did the draft videos, we didn't see him. We haven't seen him in the offseason off videos. But then last week in the uh, Ravens Wired, we kind of seen the debut of Greg Roman in this offseason. <laughs> so he was featured in the video. And um, so, yeah, so now he's doing a press conference. All right. Now, obviously, Greg Roman is a controversial figure in the Ravens fan base right now. Like most offensive coordinators end up being in the Ravens fan base, but he's the latest one. So what he had to say at this press conference was, like I mentioned earlier, he was impressed with how Nick Boyle looks in his recovery. And he expects him to do, you know, Nick Boyle like things this year have a good season. He also talked about Lamar Jackson. He said the kind of thing along the lines of John Harbaugh that um, I know Lamar Jackson is he's not here, but I know he's away from the team working hard. I don't have any concerns about that. But he did say something that on the field was interesting. He said that uh, Lamar knows 80% of the playbook, but we got 20% of the playbook that's new that he'll have to learn when he gets here. So that 20%, we'll see what it is. Um, we'll see if Greg Roman's opening up the quote-unquote vault and we can finally see some new plays and some more um, dynamic designs, right? Um yeah, so when he said that, it kind of caught everybody's eyebrows, like, raised everybody's eyebrows, like, uh -huh. So 20%, honey, so he, you're adding in that much of a new playbook. Okay, we'll, we'll see. Um, what else? Tyler Linderbaum. The Ravens are throwing everything at Tyler Linderbaum and seeing what he can handle, and apparently he's handling it well. Greg Roman said that he wants Tyler Linderbaum right now to be up at night, worried about the next day. So, <laughs> basically... And ending what he was saying was that if his, if he throws a lot at him now, by the time training camp comes along, it's easier. Then by the time the season comes along, he's folded up, ready to go. So instead of taking it slow with him and having him progress during the season, they're doing, a, they're doing a lot more on him now. So then when we get into more high-pressure situations, training camp, preseason, regular season, he's comfortable, he's ready to go. It's obviously very clear that he's going to be the Ravens starting center. So... They're doing this to see how much he can handle, and apparently he's handling it well. So that's good to hear. All right. Um, and the last thing, the most important thing, uh, adapt, adjust, evolve. That's what Greg Roman said. That's what the Ravens must do. Now, with Greg Roman, there has been many, many times the Ravens fans say he does not adjust in games. He does not adapt. He does not evolve. He hit all three key words in this press conference when he said that. So now when the Ravens are going into going into a game and they see something that's not working. Miami game, perfect example. Miami was the first team to really zero blitz the Ravens consistently like that. They're not the first team to blitz Lamar Jackson. If you go back to 2019 and even uh, the years before that, Lamar Jackson was one of the best quarterbacks against the blitz. Him picking up the blitz wasn't the issue, okay? Now, it was a, it was a myriad of issues that led to that Miami game, offensive line, uh, play calling, a myriad of issues that led to that uh, terrible game. So, if he's on this adjust, adapt, evolve, then games like that, it's okay to have that happen one quarter, maybe even two quarters. But second half, half after that halftime, we need to see something different. We need to see an adjustment. We need to see progress. So if Greg Roman truly wants to be the Ravens offensive coordinator or hell, be a head coach somewhere else, he needs to show that he can improve in those areas and really make a change when it doesn't look like it's going the Ravens' way. Because sometimes, you know, we get down in these games and it doesn't look like it's going our way, we can sink. But last year was real progress. Ravens had a lot of comebacks, you know. So you can say that's a good thing, it's a bad thing. Bad because they started off so slow. A lot of games, the Ravens start off really slow. It's a good thing because they never gave up. Now, we used to say, you teach to say about it, oh, we get the Ravens down two possessions. They know Lamar Jackson era, that is. We get the Ravens down two possessions, that's game over because they can't throw the ball effectively enough to come back. And Lamar disproved that theory like he disproves many theories. He disproved that last season. So now if the Ravens can combine adjusting earlier in the game so we don't have to have these deficits with um, effective play calling, we could be in for something good. So Greg Roman, a lot of Ravens fans are <laughs> not happy just to the OC. But in my opinion, I'm not going to begin to that because he's still here. So whether I want him to be here or not, he's still here. And I want him to do the best job possible because I want to see the Ravens win the Super Bowl. So, uh, Greg Roman, hopefully you take that adjust, adapt, uh, evolve model to heart, and we really see some progress this year. All right, well, anyway, that's the observations from the second round of OTAs from the writers. Uh, it's your boy Gabriel. There's another fan CV.
I'm out.